It's 7 a.m. in North London. There are queues of immigrants forming outside this retail park. Existing under the radar, this is a thriving and legal job market. So we're going to the spot where I first started noticing these guys. They're always there. They're always standing there waiting, sometimes approaching cars and that. So I want to see if there are any uh, there today. Yeah, there are. It is estimated there are several hundred thousand immigrants working illegally in the UK without papers. I want to know who these people are, how this market operates, and why numbers appear to be on the increase. I don't want to approach these guys cold. I'm going to head into this news agent and find out a bit more first. Early morning, 5, 6 o'clock, so I heard from my neighbors. They're making noise. They're sitting around, just waiting for the people to grab them and pick them up. It's normally there are 50 people, so Sunday is 150 people. So on Sunday is the worst day. And do the police get involved? They do get involved. It's like a cat and mouse game between them and the police. Who are the guys that pick them up? Well, anybody. Builders, they come and grab them. You need it for one hour, for one day. Do you think they're supplying a demand because people are picking them up? Obviously. They come 6 in the morning, by 9, 10 o'clock, you don't see nobody. So that uh, means they, they all gone to their works. Oh, and so they are happy. When they give me money, pay for something, we see 50 pound note in their pocket, 20 pound, 60 pound, 100 pound. So that means so they, they are making... Yeah, that's now. exactly. It sounds like this underground market is doing a thriving business. I'm going to try and speak to one of the guys waiting for work. Hello. I meet Peter, a 27-year-old Romanian. He agrees to chat to me. Are you allowed to work in the UK? I have the, uh, my ID from Romanian. Yes. But here, I don't have ID. So um, nobody knows you're here? Yeah. I have so many questions, but as we're talking, a van man pulls up and Peter and his friend go over to negotiate work. How much you take normally? Uh, which work you have? We have a delivery. Yeah. One, uh, 160, 170 cases yeah. in Baker Street. The job is just for one. Peter wants to talk, but not here. He says he has a lot to lose. So we go to chat somewhere quiet. How easy is it to get jobs from the car park? Like, how often do you get jobs? Is it guaranteed every day or, like, once every other day? It's guaranteed every day, yeah. And what kind of work have you been getting? Construction. Every work uh, gives me 60, 70 pounds mm -hmm. a day. Peter's working off the books to save money for his family in Romania. They both look like you. <laughs> Which means he needs to keep his cost of living in the UK to a minimum. He shows me footage of his current place. I give him 60 pounds from okay. week. I live in there, 21 people. It's very dirty. These are just beds lined up. Here I sleep in me and my brother. And you pay 60 pounds a yeah. week to sleep yeah. here? Yeah. Somebody is making a lot of money, around 5,000 pound a month from housing these illegal workers. I know four house, and it's here 120 Romanian guy. In between four houses? Yeah. And these are all just the guys from the same car park looking for work yeah. with you? Yeah, Oh, my God, that's a lot. It's clear these immigrants are being exploited by landlords who are prepared to cram increasing numbers into their houses. But it's where they work that interests me and who is employing them. I think it's essential that I speak to a van man. It's been a bit of a nightmare. I've approached them. They either just drive off give a bit of abuse. Um, they don't want to be exposed. One of my leads finally pays off, and he agrees to speak to me right now on the phone. Before I make the call, I want to watch the footage Peter has sent me through from his last job. It looks really bad. It looks really, really bad. I'm here in the job. This is my hammer. It's very, very dirty. And it's very hard, hard, hard job. It's obviously a working construction site, so it's going to be a mess, but not uh, surely not like this. This is 
like a health and safety nightmare. He's on his own. He's not got a helmet on. I know he doesn't wear proper even shoes, let alone steel toe cap boots. There's cables sticking out. He could electrocute himself. He, he could have an accident, something could fall on him. Anyone working illegally, you have no rights, you have no cover, there is no insurance. And that's all there for a reason, to protect your interests. And he's not got anything like that, and none of those guys have. So I do want to speak to this van man now and say, look, why are you doing it off the books and cutting corners? So let's see if he picks up. It's ringing. Hello? Do you pick up illegal immigrants as workers? Has the number of guys queuing up for work gone up? It is becoming more common. Before, you never saw that many, maybe four or five guys. Sometimes you'll go at seven in the morning and there'll be 40 or people there. Why are you picking up workers in this way? They work for a little bit less than normal people. Right. Uh, 130 pounds for a day's work. Someone from UK, maybe for the same sort of job, might be charging 170 or 190. Well, so you're saving per worker about 40 to 60 pound a day? Yes, definitely. I've heard of some guys are a lot cheaper than that as well, but so then how are they affording to even live here? A lot of them live in shared homes. This guy's aware these workers share homes, but he's also putting them at risk in the workplace. Don't you worry about things like tax insurance, like if someone had an accident when they're working for you? Personally, no. Uh, I don't see any issue. But do you see anything wrong with picking guys up from car parks? There are guys there which are ready to do work for you, so I mean, this is going to help you save costs. It's going to help you get your job done. Then what's the harm in that? I mean, that. The, he doesn't see there being anything wrong with what he's doing at all. As nice as he sounded on the phone, by recruiting people in this way, you're supporting that network of dodgy landlords preying on these workers. Like You're just adding to the problem. And I, I think it's a ticking time bomb, to be honest. It seems everyone wants to pay less these days. And over one third of UK employers don't check for illegal workers. And many immigrants are so underpaid, they resort to desperate means. I'm heading to a local soup kitchen that has seen an increase in homeless migrants through their doors. It's about 40 people a night. 20% of the people that come along are migrant workers. What kind of conditions are these guys living in if they're coming here looking for work? People come and they're optimistic of finding work. When they don't realise that goal, they're sleeping anywhere just to find this work. There's a, a downward spiral that happens very quickly to you if you're in another country and things are going wrong for you. Yeah. There are a number of suicides in London. There was eight last year, I think, of hangings in parks of Eastern Europeans who just can't take it anymore. But it appears sleeping rough isn't the only thing these guys have to worry about. I've been told recently that people have just gone because there have been immigration raids with the police that um, people are no longer in the country. They're being deported. Martin takes me to meet Steve, a migrant who was working off the books and is now homeless. I'm keen to find out why. Hello. Nice to meet you, Steve. I understand you're going to take us out and show us where you're living at the moment. The number of Eastern European immigrants sleeping rough in London now makes up nearly 40% of the capital's homeless. Steve takes me to the car park of a well-known retailer. This is my living room. In this I car park? Living room. Where do you sleep? It's Show here. me. So, what, can we go and have a look? I sleep here because I have the roof, you know. You've got it's not raining. It's not raining. Steve moved here from Hungary looking to find work. When you came, you decided to come to England. What did you come here for? Uh, I want to enjoy life, you know. I want to see the world. So you're working uh, off the books, like you're working in the black market? Yeah, yeah, right. exactly, a right. building site. Okay. Demolition, you know, demolition. Okay. Then what happened? After and... three weeks, a uh, scamming accident Let's... for them. I go upstairs, you know, put a screw and play wood. So you stood on it? Yeah, yeah. And, and then, fell. yeah, and for them. How badly helped? He has broken my hand, my ribs, my back, my legs. Oh no. Did they ring an ambulance? Did they get you help? No, nothing. Close the door, take me out, same rubbish, because it's, uh, it's illegal job. So it's a legal job? I, I, yeah, illegal job. Uh, no tax, no papers. 
Unable to work, Steve's been living on the streets ever since. So this is your bedding in here? And you do this every day? You are an experienced construction worker. Yeah. You have lots and lots of skills. Did you ever imagine when you came here that you'd be living like this? It's not good, you know? No. no, because it's very, very difficult. Mm -mm. And it's because of the accident. Too much yeah. pain. Pain because of my, my, yeah. my, my, my bed. Despite everything, Steve is still hopeful he can change his situation. Working one man, save mm -hmm. money. Yeah. No drinking. Yeah. No, save money for rent, you know. Mm -hmm. And so That's then it. you, can, you yeah. can stop living rough. No, it's it. Thank you so much. It's okay. been a pleasure meeting okay. you. And I wish Let's you all the luck for the future. I think Steve is the dark reality, to be honest, of the illegal job centre. I mean, he had the job. It was off the books. He had the accident. There's no insurance, no care for him. They threw him out like rubbish, and now he's living rough. In their mind, he's a commodity, he's there to work. They're going to exploit him for the work. If it goes wrong, then find another guy to do the work. More and more people, I think, will be picking them up because they're offering a cheaper service than what we have in the UK under the regulations and the laws. The governments say they're cracking down on this network, the workers, the employers and the landlords. Right now, their plans for illegal workers seem to be either forcing them out or locking them up but my experience is that most fall through the cracks. It's a sort of cycle that's just creating more homelessness, more alcoholism, suicide. You can't cope like that, and I think it's tragic.